folks, and welcome to this wonderful webinar we have planned for you, Data Quality, the Key to Improving Your ITSM and CMDB Efficiencies. On behalf of EMA and Blazant, so happy you joined. Today we've got Mr. Den Dennis Drogthis, Vice President at EMA. We also have the Blazant Chief Product Architect, Mr. Michael Ludwig. And my name is Mark Thompson, Director of Marketing and Products at, at Blazant. So maybe some of you haven't heard about Blazant, but we've been around for over a decade. We are the pioneers in master data management. Today I'm going to kick the ball off and pass it over to Dennis, who's done a great deal of research and pioneered in, in information in the industry, especially around data efficiencies and the CMDB systems. Thank you. So we have a lot to cover in 25 minutes uh, for my part of the agenda. Um, and here's the spread. I wanted to start with uh, some insights on where the CMDB and the CMS, Configuration Management System, are today a little bit, how they're evolving, how things are changing, and they're growing, not declining, but growing relevance as a foundation and enabler for digital transformation, uh, cloud, agile, et cetera. Um, we'll look at issues because there are plenty of them uh, that remain and uh, in some ways accelerate uh, with uh, the need for more dynamic currencies uh, and more cross-domain uh, ways of working. Uh, we're going to then look a little bit at advanced uh, IT analytics, which is EMA's term for advanced analytics that uh, IT can leverage in support of its own efficiencies in support of the business efficiencies as well. Um, and we have, sort of as opposed to some of the more standard industry terms for uh, uh, operational analytics, the reason for that is that the analytics are not limited to operations. They very much involve ITSM groups. Uh, development, executives, and sometimes the business community based on our data. And we're going to look at what Blazant really does better than any other vendor based on uh, my own dialogues and deployment and, of course, its uh, own unique design point, which is integrated data analytics. Um, and uh, then kind of summarize uh, uh, my piece up, and then I'll be uh, turning it over to Michael uh, Ludwig for uh, the next conversation. So uh, this is a somewhat simplified drawing, although it doesn't look real simplified, I understand, of uh, a series of diagrams in the book that um, uh, we just published. Just by the way, it's called um, CMDB Systems Making Change Work in the Age of Cloud and Agile. So Morgan Kaufman published it, came out in the spring. And the reason we call it a CMDB system, not just a CMDB, is what you see here is truly a system. Uh, a kind of quick summary of what you're seeing, and you'll see that there uh, is a use case highlighted here, which is change management, right? There are other use cases that we'll be looking at shortly, uh, more performance or more asset. I pick change as sort of the centerpiece because it's kind of at the center of what a lot of the CMS investments are about. On the left in dark, you see what is more classic CMDB, more process-centric, uh, typically a little less real-time, uh, and you see the inputs coming in, uh, dependency mapping, configuration data, asset data, capacity. Uh, you even see application development, uh, and DevOps is a growing use case, as we'll see. On the right, in the lighter gray, you see a more of a performance-centric system, also modeled, also capturing interdependencies. The data may or may not altogether reside back in the, in the core black arena, uh, but what is uh, important to see is all the different kinds of inputs that are characteristic of that more real-time CMS, events, KPIs associated with time series data, uh, flow data, et cetera, transactional insights and transactional analytics, and often increasingly, in the age of digital transformation, uh, business outcomes, revenue-related activities, business process impacts, all flowing together through the system. What's unifying it is a combination of service modeling where the interdependencies can be connected, even if the data is not all in one place, analytics and automation. And as we look at what Blazin can do in this environment, it's very interesting because not only does it help update the core CMDB, 
but it provides an analytic system for assessing tool set efficiencies and tool set reconciliation needs that can impact the entire system very directly. So, in spite of some of the industry um, uh, words to the contrary, uh, our data shows, and this is current data from this year, that in fact CMDB and CMS deployments are generally on the upswing. Uh, we were able to contrast it with some research we did a few years ago. Um, and I think here the, the numbers speak for themselves. We actually saw 80% um, either owning or about to purchase some level of a CMDB or CMS. We were not specific about uh, all the design points. Uh, we're actually rather eclectic in terms of core initiatives. What we're really looking for is can you capture service interdependencies and can you provide a reconciled uh, data set to support uh, any number of use cases around that modeling? Uh, how you do it, uh, whether it's duct tape or bubble gum or something else, uh, we didn't uh, go into. And uh, a growing need to federate and bring in different data sources was also a trend. This was really interesting as well, uh, same data uh, from uh, that same research. What are the use cases that people are doing with CMDB CMS? Uh, it's a changing story. This was the first time ever, and this data came in again from Q1 of this year, that performance-related service impact uh, was the number one use case uh, just by a few percentage points over the core uh, center pieces of change management and asset management. Of course, change uh, and performance are very, very closely interrelated. But you can see some of the other uh, key areas. Security is very high now. Uh, cloud is making that even more important. Uh, data center migration, uh, uh, another priority. And the average respondent in our research uh, indicated at least three use cases uh, for the CMDB investment. So like analytics, a CMDB is a multi-use case investment. There are many examples of how and why a CMDB investment is good, along with all the many examples of why it can be challenging. Um, and uh, this is one. And I think, uh, so there are two points really to this slide. One is just the success rates. We looked at those who were extremely successful um, in their uh, IT service management initiative. That group was twice as likely to have a CMDB or CMS deployed as all the other groups. I think that makes a pretty emphatic statement right there. Uh, we also, by the way, just completed some research on digital transformation. I will be doing a webinar um, later this month on the 30th. And uh, we got similar data there in terms of CMDB being um, one of the four key technologies that shows, um, uh, separates the extremely successful from the, uh, those who were less successful in digital transformation. I should add uh, on Blazon's behalf, because it's not unrelated, uh, data integration and in particular data quality management ranked really high as well both in separating the successful out and in terms of uh, investments made to support di the digital and IT transformation. But if you look down at the quote, um, second quote, I think the, 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 what I'd like to call your attention to, uh, aside from the obvious 20 million in redundant data, which is um, a lot of swimming in different data sources that don't really work together, but uh, politically one business unit had its own tools, another business unit had its own tools. The politics of data uh, are a big factor in uh, either inhibiting or uh, enabling uh, progress towards a, a truly transformed IT organization. Again, counter to uh, some in the industry, um, an effective way of understanding interdependencies across uh, services and infrastructure and different data sources is fundamental to being successful in both internal and increasingly uh, external public cloud investments as well. Uh, again, twice as likely to, um, to have a uh, CMDB deployed if you're extremely successful in optimizing cloud for business service delivery. Um, 
visibility really does count. Again, in spite of some of the things you'll hear from some vendors that, oh, you really don't have to care where things are. Guess what? You do. And you really do if you want to optimize to cost and value. Visibility is key. Uh, some of the things we saw in terms of specific use cases on um, the cloud area were uh, just visualizing the data center as you could migrate to, uh, say, internal um, a virtualized and cloud environment, uh, provisioning services, right, so that the services over the cloud mosaic um, are where they need to be and you can manage them effectively and manage change effectively, uh, looking at the impacts of changes by understanding interdependencies, um, looking at compliance and risk assessments. Of course, asset management is generally more, not less challenging with cloud, so uh, managing license and assets more effectively. There is also a use case that's not uh, indicated here um, regarding development and sort of the rogue nature of uh, exploring stuff that's available in uh, AWS or other public cloud environments that seem uh, like fun that may not be uh, uh, secure or safe. Uh, I won't go into it much now because there's not time. I've been asked about, you know, what about CMDBs and containers? There's a growing need to bring those two worlds together as well, and I'm sure we could have a conversation about that. But if you look at what containers are, they're sort of a very rough, crude sketch uh, uh, of sort of localized interdependencies, but certainly not a full uh, service model. How about the move to Agile and DevOps, which is so central to um, a lot of the transformational efforts? Uh, number one, we saw a, a growing role for IT service management teams working directly with development. 30% were actually leveraging the CMS or CMDB to um, automate and provision development requirements uh, for uh, um, developing applications across the infrastructure. So there's a consistent you know, pre-deployment Q&A and then deployment story around interdependencies versus a sort of uh, development living in Disneyland and then operations living in California, which is still the case quite often. Uh, and in one uh, quote you'll see, uh, this is in our book, we have a whole Q&A around it, uh, there was a, a development, actually, a development organization, it was a mid-tier company, purchased the CMDB um, and pushed it into operations, and they weren't using ITIL or IT Infrastructure Library, they were using Scrum, uh, but it turned out that the development team was a lot more aware um, of the need to be service aware and cross-domain, whereas in, in their environment, their operations group was very siloed. Uh, so the um, so development took the lead there. All right, so there are issues, and uh, they're generally human, as you will see, uh, human first in moving forward. Leveraging the CMS, uh, leveraging data um, is a very human as well as technology-related challenge, although technology and great technology, uh, good analytics, for instance, for data quality and data integration can go a long way. And again, we'll see that coming up soon. Number one, organizational and political issues. They were the chief challenges in not only the IT service management futures research that you see here. They scored number one also for digital and IT transformation. Um, and uh, my bad joke about that is as, as far as a direct hit from a technology perspective, the only technology I'm aware of that might apply there is from pharmacology, not high tech, but we haven't seen a drug yet to solve organizational and political issues. Uh, maybe that's an opportunity for uh, some drug company. Poor dialogue and communication fits right in, right? Everybody clinging to their own little silo, lack of defined processes, uh, and then we get into uh, more administrative software deployment and administration and the, and the reinforced siloed nature of siloed tools. So here are the human face to uh, tool sets for all and data ownership, which are very closely aligned, right? Uh, the, uh, if you look at the upper left, lower left, and uh, lower right, you, there's kind of the same message in all of those three quotes, which is, I've got my tool, you've got your tool, I don't trust you, I don't trust your tool, I own my data, I don't want to see yours, and, you know, I, I'm going to do my job, just leave me alone. 
Uh, and that still applies. And again, um, there's no single magic wand. One of the things we do recommend is dialogues and stakeholder conversations and documentation around that problem. Uh, the upper right quote is an instance of, of the problems that arise uh, from uh, that kind of an attitude uh, where you had big discrepancies in terms of uh, what was out there and what was not out there based on different data sources. So data quality is one way of bringing this all together uh, and uh, you providing a, a, a meaningful context for actually understanding what tool sets really do what and how they apply and how they might be brought together in a more effective mosaic and then leveraging that data for the CMS. And so uh, we're going to look at that a little more closely in a few of the following slides, but it's definitely a, um, a about a six exclamation point value in moving forward to try to fix the problem. So why advanced IT analytics is a game changer? So one of the reasons we call it advanced IT analytics is because, um, again, it's not just operations. It's not operational analytics or whatever. It's analytics that's multi-use case. It supports not just operations, but the IT service management team, and in fact, can support development, uh, executive community, and business stakeholders. We saw an average of nine stakeholders, and we did our analytics research uh, per respondent. Uh, <clears throat> Four of them were domain-specific, three of them were cross-domain, and two of them were business stakeholders on average. And what happens, uh, what, what, you know, what do you get that's good from this? Um, so one thing that's not on this chart, because we asked it in a separate question, analytics is a foundation for automation, right? Analytics provides insight. It's the big windshield that allows you to drive fast on the highway, if you, if you try to automate without insight, uh, you can automate train wrecks. But in terms of decision making, which is related, you see um, priorities, again, between ITSM and operations, and this was our IT service management research, decision making between ITSM and business stakeholders, and IT and business stakeholders in general, uh, better executive decision making overall, uh, support with development, um, and better insights into the change, right? If then, if we do this, what will happen? Interdependencies, uh, another thing that's, I think, been neglected by the industry is the marriage of insight into service interdependencies and analytics. Uh, there's a huge value, and we've seen this again with CMS, CMDB, and app dependency mapping brought together with analytics it's definitely a win-win situation. Um, this breakout shows um, some of the top priorities from an analytics perspective. Infrastructure to application, not surprisingly, is number one. But you can see infrastructure to infrastructure or dependencies uh, across the application world, virtualized to non-virtualized, et cetera. Um, only 6% is actually, uh, because of the way this chart was formed, it's more like 10%. Only 10% of those investing in advanced analytics uh, were not interested in interdependencies. Um, and I can say, I think pretty safely, based on my research and conversations, that 10% is misled. Those interdependencies are key to optimizing analytic investments. And um, more on the benefit side, when you've got the analytics empowering you, faster time to resolve problems, and better optimization of assets, they're tied for first place, interestingly enough. Real-time insights for historical trends, correlation with change in performance, better use of infrastructure, faster identification of security, all these things, no big surprise. And of course, when you, as you evolve to more advanced analytics, uh, self-learning analytics, you have less overhead in creating rules and writing uh, and rules and thresholds. Now let's look more specifically at uh, integrated uh, data analytics and uh, the Blazin portfolio a little bit based on, again, a lot of the conversations I've had. Three main values that we can talk to as of today, and uh, I will also mention, um, and Michael may or may not want to expand on that, 
there's a lot of forward movement as well. Um, Blazon is becoming a very powerful analytic engine uh, in its own right, uh, even beyond these use cases. One is optimizing existing management investments. Uh, where are your tool sets working and where are they not? No other vendor that I'm, I've come across, and I talked to hundreds, has even approached this problem uh, w w anywhere near the efficiency that, and breadth that Blazin can bring. Uh, optimizing your uh, IT hardware and software assets and services, um, that also becomes an extension of uh, the insights that Blazin can do in some of the data um, integration and uh, quality analytics. And then empowering the whole CMDB system, third use case. Okay, so um, I really like this quote in terms of optimizing tool sets because there's a little bit of a human flavor in it, right? If you look, it says, we help these folks see where the gaps are. We try to put a positive spin because not everybody wants to see that their tool isn't the best thing ever. Um, but they have now a clear and uh, a well-defined uh, map of what's working and what's not. Um, and so they need the data, they need the quality, but they also need to have the opportunity to optimize uh, their tool sets. And some of the benefits we see here uh, from that kind of investment improve performance and availability, uh, better, a faster time to resolve problems, CapEx savings because of insights into redundancies. And by the way, you can consolidate the tool set investment, more effective support for audits, improved security, improved IT governance, Improved team building is a very human factor in human to tool relationships <clears throat> and better business alignment because IT is more holistically uh, informed. When it comes to optimizing uh, hardware and software assets, um, I think these quotes uh, pretty much speak for themselves. The one on the left uh, is actually from a uh, large uh, provider of uh, automotive capabilities, uh, parts. Uh, to make vehicles uh, safer and uh, uh, to drive, really. And uh, it's a very large group. Uh, they have 150,000 employees worldwide, so there's a lot of people behind that quote. Um, and they have, those folks have about 50,000 PCs connected in a global network of uh, particularly 46,000 users. Um, 18,000 of these are engineers, and they're in 30 countries, and the engineers are high maintenance because uh, they have a uh, high uh, quality software. So Blazon allowed them to optimize uh, those license investments on a 24 hour cycle. The second quote on the right comes from a uh, large managed services provider uh, based in Europe. You can see that really understanding just what they own responsible for is critical for them and brought them a lot of value. And the third use case here, optimizing and empowering the CMDB system. Um, I like the quote on the left because it singles out 35 different discovery tools uh, and then goes on to talk about different types of sources, <clears throat> desktop security, network management, administration, application dependency, management and administration uh, for systems, asset management, business service management, performance management, just to name a few categories. And I think I heard yesterday that the um, highest number uh, so far in a Blazing deployment is 54 different uh, tools integrated into a single system. Uh, the quote on the right is a plea uh, and a recommendation that if you don't have good data quality uh, and you don't even know that you don't have good data quality, uh, your uh, foundation for your CMS is probably uh, going to be uh, more of a frustration than an advantage. So I'm going to wrap up now and then turn it over uh, to Michael, but I just want to summarize. CMDB systems actually are evolving in many interesting and creative ways. There are a lot of new technologies, by the way, being applied to them. That's kind of another conversation. But uh, Blazon is a really good example of one of them. More dynamic, more use case diverse, um, more critical in the move to cloud and agile, uh, more transformative for IT. and uh, directly supportive of uh, initiatives like digital transformation. Um, but there are a lot of issues. The issues are, first of all, human. 
uh, but those human uh, issues can also be mapped to tool sets, sprawl, data management, data ownership, all these things do get in the way. Advanced IT analytics um, is a game changer and really a big part of, not separate from, the, the broader vision of the CMDB system and what it can be and what it needs to be. And Placent's integrated data analytics um, is central to this empowerment and uh, many proven values, again, based on dialogues, conversations, uh, and deployment interviews I've had. Uh, so I'm, I'm delighted to be able to talk to it and uh, welcome any of your questions. Thank you so much, Dennis. That was excellent information. I will now pass it over to Michael Ludwig. Thank you, Mark, uh, and thank you, Dennis. Your, your insights are always uh, some of the most valuable available to us. Uh, the power of Blazent is really born out of our Blazent data intelligence platform, and that's run on top of our big data engine where we combine all of the existing data that you have available to you within your environment, and we process that data through our patented five-step data evolution process. And the results of that process are the truest and most current form of high-quality uh, data that would be available to you, and we use that data to fuel our analytics and then push downstream uh, to affect processes that you have running, including uh, processes within the service management system, which we spoke about today. And some of the value that we are currently bringing in the service management area are, as I mentioned, uh, with the engine itself, true multi-source reconciliation of all data sources including third-party dependency tools like ADDM and TATAM. And as Dennis mentioned in his research, those dependency mapping tools are very, very important in constructing relationships between uh, infrastructure pieces and application and application component to infrastructure. We also provide via our analytics continuous data quality auditing for uh, configuration items, uh, their elements or attributes, and the relationships uh, that are born between those elements, and then common reference tables that really are uh, a major source of fuel for many service management systems, and that would include product model tables and locations and departments and vendors and those kinds of things where oftentimes if those tables are not done correctly, the end reporting uh, that's gained from the service management system is actually inaccurate as it's split over dif different representations of what are essentially the same thing. Uh, one of the other capabilities that's, that's been really hot for us lately is the integration of cloud computing resources data uh, and integrate, integrating that into the CMDB and also into the asset management side of the house. You know, as Dennis mentioned during his research portion, uh, asset management becomes more complicated with the move to the cloud and our ability to bring that data in and reconcile it with the existing data both on the asset side and the CMDB side is a tremendous value to our customers. Um, one of the mainstays of our core analytics around CMDB data quality is our ability to validate CIs and their relationships before they're ever populated into the CMDB. Uh, a lot of times we see uh, when we engage with a customer who's already implemented their CMDB and they've done it via data that came out of, of a previously existing CMDB system or an asset management system, that they're actually populating CIs that are no longer relevant as their life cycle has aged out. And that creates uh, problems downstream, and particularly in change impact analysis as you're looking at essentially CIs that don't really exist and you're planning them into your change impact studies. So that's problematic at best. Uh, we've also just introduced some new capability where we have the ability to integrate third-party purchasing systems like Ariba uh, and also vendor line item data that's uh, supplied to many large enterprises around the hardware and software that they purchased. And that helps to enable receiving and stockroom functions, which is really the heart of onboarding into the asset management system and needs to be done very carefully or, again, 
you end up creating assets and uh, their CI counterparts uh, that are either not operational or not online yet. And then finally, we help to manage the population of installed software and the relationships that those have to the computing devices on which they're installed. And we have a great set of analytics around that that can be used to help fuel your software license management initiatives as well as software rationalization initiatives. So we're bringing a great deal of value to customers, not only in terms of data quality, but the downstream impacts and processes that, that are relied upon that are fueled by the CMDB. And so these are our core essentials to having quality data throughout the entire ITSM process structure. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Mark, who's going to do a, a brief demo of some of our capabilities. Thank you so much, Michael. In this particular webinar focused a lot around, you know, we talked about CMDB and data quality. We have tremendous downstream impacts for that area. We have solutions around data governance, around operational validations, operational tool set coverage, and, and software inventory analysis. And what we do is we allow you to do these analytics. As Michael mentioned, one of the areas around is we ensure the population of the CMDB is not polluted. And so we have what we call the electronic gate in our floodlight analytic that allows you to understand what CMDBs are populating to your CMDB, but also based on the business rules, which are configurable based on our best practices, to understand and make sure that you apply the, the right business rules around electronic validation or the currency rules to ensure your CMDB is actually not pop populated with uh, CIs that you don't want to be populated into your system. We also mentioned one of our areas around ensuring the integrity of the CMDB for data that may be in there. And one of the ways we do that is in our bullseye analytic. We understand data that may be missing values, as in we've got a CI that we know that there's some values that we've discovered that are missing that should be populated, and as far as con conflicting values. So if you have conflict, then that's going to be difficult for you to resolve with any manual or homegrown processes. We have this all built in to our system to allow you to drill down into your CMDB, into the data with our analytics, and we give you a great grid view. So Dennis mentioned many, many times that tool sets aren't trusted. Everyone thinks that their tool set's the best but we provide that transparency in our grid where we can see all of the sources that were used to come up with the values that are conflicting. In this particular case, it's CPU, which is very, very important for your CPU count. If you're doing a software license management initiative or anything around service management, if I'm trying to triage an issue or I need to resolve something with a server, and I don't know how many CPUs, maybe the model information is incorrect. This is all valuable information because in order for me to triage or make a change on an item, I need the most accurate data possible. And many times people think their own tool sets are the best, but we provide that transparency with our grid. We also have a closed loop integration to ServiceNow. This is key because many times data quality issues, are, although they're identified, they're not actually resolved because either maybe through email or there's no closed loop process to ensure that now that we've identified that data quality issue, how do we actually resolve it? So we actually have a closed loop integration with ServiceNow, one of the most advanced integrations on the ServiceNow platform using our great technology, REST services to ensure all the information is updated in a timely manner, near real time. So if you're a ServiceNow user, depending on your role in the service management space, if you could be on the incident team or change team, we have an integration where it comes into the familiar console as a ServiceNow user. You can have all the tickets in a familiar in interface that you can see that's based on your role and your view. And you can look at any issues that are coming in around data quality, this particular issue or incident is specifically for the CPU issue, and it's open. You can take whatever actions, and we've got an integration where 
if you are a ServiceNow user, you don't have to be a familiar with data quality. So before you maybe resolve this incident and update the ServiceNow CMDB with the correct CPU count, we also provide that same grid view, once again, transparency, because we understand that people responsible for data quality are not always going to be the people, probably uh, rarely going to be the people in the service management arena. So with our closed loop integration with ServiceNow, we have enabled uh, that process for a closed loop capability. We talked a lot about service management, but one of the other areas that we do have in the Blazent solution is around a dashboard. We have the ability to create these dashboards based on the persona in the organization. So if you're a data quality person or you're responsible for any operational initiatives or an executive, one of the great capabilities we recently announced in our, in our latest release is the ability to create these configurable dashboards based on your persona. This particular one's covering the different tool set coverage, uh, billing, maybe you're responsible for billings uh, in your organization, maybe you're an MSP or an MSI. So it really doesn't matter. We provide a very easy ability to configure customized dashboards so you can get that entire perspective of organizational issues or projects you may be responsible for. And the dashboards actually do have drill down. So if you don't do want to drill down into those grids, which I showed earlier, and take action on those issues, you can go ahead and do that. We are so excited about this new capability as we are not only providing transparency to what we call uh, admins, but everyone across the organization, depending on where you are applying your data management initiatives. And I'll pass it over to Michael. Thank you, Mark. In closing, we'd just like you to know that uh, only Blazing can take that 40% of bad data that's being statistically bandied about and take that down to zero through the use of our Blazing data intelligence platform. And Blazing understands all of your data and, and its sources because we've spent the last 11 years working significantly in the tool set and data management arena, particularly within IT itself. Uh, we have direct experience with over 250 different data source types, and we've created master data management rules around all of those data sources. We can free up 20% more of your IT resources because we have the ability to automate much of this data quality process which means that you have room to focus your resources on things that are really, really important to you, like incident management, change management, software license management, asset management, and some of the other areas that require a great amount of detail. And we can help you make 40% better decisions because the quality of the data that is fueling your downstream activities is the highest form because it's been processed through our five-step data evolution process. And you don't have to just take my word for it. Dennis has had the opportunity to interview many of our customers, and uh, he did some, some rather lengthy interviews for the book that he recently wrote, and I'm sure Dennis would be able to testify that that is indeed the case. Absolutely, Michael. It, um, it's actually gratifying to put it in a narrative where you can see all the humanity, the voices, the politics, the issues, and then pull it all together and see what Blazing can do. Uh, very compelling stories. Thanks so much, Dennis and Michael. We appreciate everyone joining uh, this webinar. It's nice to have all of our great customers and prospects listening and how Blazent and our data intelligence platform can help you drive home and make effective decision making with your IT. We would love to have you use the link on the slide there to request a demo, or even better, contact your regional sales director. Thanks a lot, everyone.